Good morning everybody. This video has been a long time coming. I know a lot of people have been asking for it. I'm going to teach you about how to Korean backdash cancel in Tekken. There are a lot of videos on how to do this out there already and some very good explanations. So there might not actually be a need for another one, but I think uh, there are a couple of things I uh, want to explain in this video that sometimes get left out of the whole picture when the Korean backdash cancel is explained. And there might be people out there who would like to hear my specific take on it. Who knows? but that's going to be the video. Um, I think uh, what I wanted to do for this initially is actually record my hands while I'm playing and show you gameplay and hands at the same time. I haven't figured out a clever way to make that work so what we're going to have to do in this video is show you gameplay and the controllers separately but I think that might actually work because I want to do kind of a, a calm methodical explanation of the whole thing anyway. Uh, one thing I need to explain initially before we jump into this is that there are actually two different ways to perform a Korean backdash cancel in this game. There is the quarter circle back back version and the down back back version. Uh, the down back back version is considered the sort of correct way to do it because it's the only way that's going to work when you're playing a back sway character such as Paul or Brian. But the quarter circle back version is uh, generally considered slightly easier to perform and slightly easier to learn, at least on a stick. And so I didn't know about the quarter circle back version when I first learned this. So I learned the down back technique. And so that's what I'm going to teach in this video. But if you want to learn the slightly easier and slightly more ergonomic technique that I think actually most people use, even at a high level, Anytime I talk about down back to cancel, cancel your back dash in this game, you can just substitute that down back for quarter circle back and it's going to be the exact same thing. But with that out of the way, I think I want to jump over to some gameplay and start explaining uh, the sort of mechanics of this before I show you how to actually perform it. So we're going to jump over to the gameplay right now. I'll see you in just a little bit. So the first thing we need to explain is that a normal back dash in Tekken is performed by pressing back back like this. Pressing back twice will allow you to do a normal backdash in Tekken. This is something that you probably already know. And so if I wanted to create a lot of space to get away from Kazumi, I could spam back and Miguel will start dashing away from her like this. The problem with this is, as you can see, it's not very fast. It doesn't create that much space in a short amount of time. And so as an evasive movement, it's not very useful. So the theory of a Korean backdash cancel is, what if there was a way to cut down the time in between the individual backdashes and allow me to perform the next backdash quicker? If I could do that, I would be a very difficult target to hit and it would open up all these great opportunities for whiff punishment. Is there a way to do that? Well, it turns out that the answer to that question is yes. And it's going to look something like that. And so the next thing I want to explain to you is uh, why this works. And uh, this is an important part of the explanation that I feel uh, gets left out a lot. And so uh, when I was learning this, I didn't know it. But then when I found it out, it actually made me understand backdashes better and allowed me to perform them better as well. So I think it's important. I want you to pay attention to my command history right now. As you can see in the bottom right corner, I am currently holding down back to make Miguel crouch block. And so uh, what happens when I let go of down back? That's the important part. Okay, so I let go of down back and as you can see, there's a back input there. Now, I didn't perform that back input. I didn't let go of down back and press back or anything. Uh, the game sort of throws in this back input for free when you let go of down back in this way. It's uh, kind of hard to make it not throw that uh, back input in there, but it happens like, yeah, almost automatically when you just let go of a down input. And so I don't know why it's programmed exactly in this way, but the reason uh, the Korean backdash cancel works is because of this free little back input that the game throws in when you let go of down back. Uh, because as I explained earlier, a normal backdash is performed with back back, and so you need two back inputs to create a backdash in this game. So the theory is if I do a backdash, I then cancel by pressing down back. I let go to get my free back input and I press back one more time. Because of the free back input, I only need to press back one more time and I've got back back. It's going to register in the game as a back dash input, even though I only press back one extra time. And this is the uh, sort of linchpin to why the technique uh, works. So when performed very slowly, it's going to be something like uh, back back, down back, let go, back. 
and if you look at the command history you can see that it's down back and then the free little back input after the down back and then my next back and because of that it becomes a new back dash and that's why the technique works and so what I think uh, we need to do right now is cut the video here for a while and show you how to perform that with your hands when actually holding a controller or a stick. All right, so I'm gonna start out by showing you how to do it on a stick. This is my Hori Real Arcade Pro Hayabusa, which is my favorite stick that I own. And so as I explained earlier, the first step to doing a Korean backdash cancel is to do a normal backdash, which is performed by doing the back back. And I do my back inputs with my thumb like this. I think that's the most common and precise technique. So you do a normal backdash with back back. You're then gonna wanna do your down back input, which I do like this. Some people only use one finger, uh, two fingers, you can use three fingers, but it's generally done by uh, sort of gripping the stick like this to get the down back input, right? Uh, you're then gonna let go of the stick completely because you need it to go back to neutral at least for a brief second, and that's the most important part of the entire input. You do back back, down back, and you let go, and you have to let go completely. If you don't, the technique is never going to work. When you've let go of the stick completely and gone back to neutral for a brief minute, it's enough that it's uh, you know uh, just a, a fraction of a second, you're gonna do uh, another back input, and that's going to be your next back dash. When you've performed this technique once, you can skip the first back back, and so you're just gonna do the second part of the technique over and over and over. So it's going to be back, back, down, back, neutral, back, down, back, neutral, back, down, back, neutral, back. And you're just going to keep going like this. So you're going to initiate the entire sequence with back, back, but there's no more back, backs after that. There's back, back, down, back, neutral, back, down, back, neutral, back. And when you start practicing this, you're eventually going to get faster and faster and faster and faster in game. And that's when you get people who are really, really good and really, really fast at this. You can barely see their hand move and then start looking, uh, start looking something like that. Uh, I probably have really crappy frame rate on my camera, which I'm really sorry about. So probably not uh, picking up perfectly, but it's essentially just this back, back, down, back, neutral, back, down, back, neutral, back and it's performed uh, faster and faster until it becomes this sort of fluid motion where you're just kind of like uh, ragdolling the, the stick. But you're doing it with very precise uh, movements because you're doing something very, very specific. Okay, let's move the stick out of the way for a little bit and get my PlayStation controller over here because I want to show you how to do this on pad as well. Uh, when I play at home, I play on pad uh, more than half the time. Uh, I play on stick when I sort of feel like it. It's kind of like a mood for me. When I'm in a good mood and I'm feeling like I love Tekken and I'm nostalgic about the arcade, I break the stick out. But when I just want to grind online, I sort of curl up in my bed a lot of the time and it's much more easy to do with your control pad. And uh, as I've mentioned before, the PlayStation 4 control pad is an amazing controller for playing Tekken. It works really well. It's actually one of the most optimal options I can recommend for you. So if you're nervous about whether or not you should own a stick or whether it's okay to play on pad, uh, I, I would definitely recommend playing on pad. I've never played on any other pad than the normal PlayStation 4 um, DualShock controller. So I don't know about all these uh, you know, Xbox controllers and people are playing on keyboards these days. Uh, I can't teach you that because I've never used it. But uh, I really recommend this PlayStation 4 controller. And if you can get a controller like this to work for your PC, if you are playing on PC, that's the pad I would recommend that you use. So again, I'm just going to show you real quickly. Very simple. Um, you're going to do the back back. And then uh, you're going to move your thumb. I'm going to, I always angle it a little bit. And I do my down back like that. I let go and press back like this. So you can see my thumb is sort of... Uh, wiggling back and forth. I don't know if it's picking up super clearly, but this is basically the technique. And the hardest part about doing it on a pad like this is to make sure that you get your thumb sort of in the middle of these two buttons and press them at the same time so that the down back input becomes clean. But it's the same thing that I showed you on the stick. Back back and then down back neutral back, down back neutral back, down back neutral back, and you're just going to repeat this and it's going to become uh, fast and clean eventually. And now this is actually plugged in, so my PlayStation just reacted. But that's a quick demonstration of how it looks in real life with your controller. 
So now that we've shown you how the Korean backdash works mechanically and sort of how to do it with your hands, the next step is going to be for you to go into practice mode and spend a lot of time trying to perfect this technique. It needs to be said that this is something very difficult that will take uh, you a lot of time to learn if you haven't yet, but I think it is a very necessary technique if you want to play Tekken at a high level. Uh, some high-level players use it quite sparingly, and some people use it instinctively every time they go back to neutral. Uh, and so it's going to come down to your playstyle in the end, but everybody uses it to some extent, and so I think it is a necessary technique that you should spend uh, time learning. And while your hands will hurt and it will feel very annoying uh, in the beginning, once you actually start pulling this off uh, reasonably well, it's going to feel uh, really, really nice. So I'm going to wrap this video up right now. I'm just going to leave you with a little clip of how the Korean backdash looks when it's actually performed at the end here. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. I know there was a little bit of like awkward cutting and stuff in this video, but as you know, if you follow my channel, I'm not like an experienced editor or anything. Hopefully it makes uh, made sense. I'm going to leave you with this clip. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again very soon.